Hello everyone, this is Ronald Tam. Um, I decided to do an update on my two Brazilian rainbow boas. Uh, it's been a while since I, I've given you an update. Um, they're doing well. Uh, and I'm um, just gonna kind of just bring them out and show you. The first one is, uh, is Ike. That's this, he's the small hypomelanistic male Brazilian rainbow that I got. And right now I'm, <clears throat> I'm actually checking ambient temperature in his cage because I he regurgitated a, a his prey item and uh, where I live at right now it's it's getting to be pretty cold I live up in the high elevations so winter time is is approaching and the temperatures are dropping I think that's had a lot to do with him regurgitating um, really bummed out about that I don't like I hate it when uh, snakes regurgitate so it's not good for him and it's hard on but uh, so, I, I, the reason I suspect low temperature is because he was basking on his hot spot towards the rear of his, of his uh, tub uh, for a couple of days and wouldn't move off that hot spot. So that usually tells you that your cage is not warm enough if they stay on that hot spot and don't leave. Or vice versa, where they stay at the cool end of the cage consistently tells you that your temperatures are too high. So. <clears throat> I'm, I bumped his, his uh, I went ahead and bumped up his uh, temperature a couple degrees on the thermostat here. Um, give you a little look here at what I'm doing. Using a Herbstat, Herbstat 1 thermostat. Okay, and just a basic Bavarian Electronics uh, thermometer. With humid with a humidity uh, monitor on there also. Um, okay, I've, I'm trying a, different, a couple different setups here. Uh, right now, I'm using a Vivarium Electronics um, CB70 rack, and with Ike, he's this male, small hypo male. I'm using a plastic hide box with indented craft paper for substrate and a humid hide. I've never used humid hides before in the past when I've kept any snake that requires high humidity, okay? But the breeder that I, um, Rainbows R Us, the one I bought these snakes from, uh, he uses these, this method. So I said, what the heck, I'm gonna give it a try. And as you can see, you see where he's at right now? He's in his humid hide. Snakes like to hide, and it's a great way to keep an animal with a clean setup I have a nice clean setup here. Um, you know, it's sanitary, the craft paper. He does have a hide over the hot spot, so if he does get cold uh, or he wants to hide somewhere where it's really warm, he can do that. Um, but for the most part, he seems to just kind of hang out inside of his uh, his humid hide here. So this is him here. The little guy threw up his food. I hate when that happens, but I'm pretty sure it's because of temperature. And if he does it again, even after I raise temperatures, then I'm gonna have to take him to the vet because it could be something else that's wrong. But he looks healthy though. I mean, he's a uh, good tongue flick. You know, he's got good weight, he's strong. So, yeah. So this is him, this is Ike. He is getting bigger. Let's go ahead and put him back in his. You know, these humid hides are great because you know, humid hides are great because they don't, they maintain humidity really well. And um, he can go, uh, go. You know, he can come and go as he, as he pleases inside that hide. <clears throat> so that's one method that I'm trying. The other method is, which I've always used in the past, is the entire tub be lined with some sort of high humidity absorbent substrate such as cypress mulch 
cocoa husk. Um, yeah, mostly those two I've used. This is a cocoa husk, crushed cocoa fiber, but it's in, you know, it's in pretty, it's in a very fine form, which it's cool, I like it, it's soft, but it's messy. Um, and this is Irene. She is my female. Excuse my shakiness on the camera. She's my pearl. This is what they call a pearl phase. Pearl phase Brazilian rainbow boa. And what it is is it's a color, it's a color morph. And uh, they um, excuse me. Pattern morph, I think. The, these these crescents here on her side, she wants to be active, are usually black, have black in them, and with pearl, they're they're of course pearl looking. They're white. And there's a super phase form of this, super form of this called zebra stripe, which <clears throat> some breeders have, I know Rainbows R Us have produced these. The zebra stripe, so I guess that's a super form of the pearl. You don't know if the pearl is a genetic trait or not. It hasn't been proven, I guess. So, but as of now, it's kind of undetermined. But I'm going to breed her with Ike. Hopefully, I gotta get him a little, little older, a little bigger, um, and breed him and see if I can get some of these pearl hypo melanistic snakes and see, uh, see what that that produces. I think that'd be a pretty cool combination. So, so anyways, with her, uh, I, I, got, I do have a new cage coming. Uh, it's a three by two, uh, 12 inches high, Bavarian Electronics PVC cage um, for her. Cause she's, she's getting to be that size. This tub's just too tight for her, especially to breed in, I, I feel. So, but she's, I mean, she's okay now, but eventually she, you know, soon she's gonna get a, a new cage, a bigger cage. So. Um, that's kind of why I have just the cocoa, uh, the uh, cocoa fiber, and a hide box for her, and a small water bowl because I just don't have the room for all that. And I'd like to. That's why I'm getting her a bigger cage so she can have the, you know, the larger bowl to soak in. Even though sometimes some I've had some Brazilian rainbow boas that just don't utilize their bowl, um, and I've had some snakes do. Just depends on the, snake, on the animal, but um, at least want to give her the opportunity to do so. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna keep using the entire cocoa fiber substrate on her cage, or am I gonna go to craft paper? They all have their advantages and disadvantages. The craft paper is, like I said, it's more sanitary, but it doesn't cover up odors. See, when, you, when, they, when these animals defecate or urinate in, their, in this cocoa choir, it's a carbon-based substrate, so it actually neutralizes. And it's, it, it's just not as stinky. On the negative side of that. You won't notice it sometimes, and this cocoa choir being, you know, that dark brown color. Sometimes it's pretty hard to find the scat or their feces in there. You can't see it with certain substrates, and that can be a, that cannot be. It's bad for spot cleaning. So, you know, as in with like as in with like aspen shavings, you it's uh, you can spot right away. Bam, there's some right there, and you can spot clean it and, and uh, keep your cage clean. So, I'm I'm all about. You know, sand, you know, keeping the animals healthy. So I think I'm gonna get her a big high box and use craft paper. But uh, I'm gonna definitely update you guys with that cage. As soon as I get that cage in, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a review on it. I'm gonna set it up and show you some of the points, you know, some of the key points that I like about it. Um, this rack is a Bavarian, I think I already mentioned that, Bavarian Electronics. I really like it a lot. Uh, it's from Reptile Basics. I think I mentioned that in my prior, my earlier videos when I first got the snakes uh, on the unboxing. So, she's eating well now. Uh, I mentioned that, I think, on my prior videos, I had a hard time getting Irene here to eat. I noticed on the on the feeding records, um, she was eating live prey. Now some snakes will only accept live prey. That could have been why I had a hard time getting her to go on Frozen Thought. The last time 
they had fed her before they shipped her to me, she did take one frozen thought. So she just started taking frozen thought. The key and the secret to getting her to eat is to make sure that rat is nice and warm. So thought, and then reapply some nice, you know, not scalding water, but some nice hot water to the rat, and then some paper towels and give that rat, uh, give him and dry him off so he's not sopping. You, you know, and then just a nice little jiggle, and yeah, that's all it took. And she takes it and holds on to it and eats it. So that's um, some snakes for picking others. But, uh, and then Ike here uh, regurgitated his meal because my temperature was too low in the cage. Uh, I should have known. I should have, you know, I beat myself over, over stuff like that because I know better. But, uh, you know, I seen him on his hot spot for a day or two. I was like, or even three days, I was like, oh man, I wonder if it's too cold in there. Eh, it was. So, but anyways guys, uh, this is an update on my snakes, what I've been doing uh, with them, and, um, and what I'm gonna be doing with them. Trying to raise Ike up big enough to be able to breed with her. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's gonna happen next breeding season. I may have to buy a larger male uh, so I can catch, so I can catch the, you know, my chances of breeding her. Cause she'll be ready, she'll be ready to, she'll be ready to go. Um, you know, as soon as I start cooling her down and, um, and, and, uh, and those kind of things. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. Um, and, um, I'll be posting another video here soon on a cage, on a new cage for her. And hopefully I still got a week or two left of some good field herping, I think. So the weather's still kind of warm. So. I'm gonna try to go out this weekend and try to find some good herbs for you guys so I can post that. I know it's been a while. All right, thanks a lot for watching and I'll comment if you like my channel. Thanks.